following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Okay, today, uh, for uh, all of those that didn't come, uh, uh, the previous uh, two CDs or DVDs, I mean, that we were uh, showing related with this uh, epic called the Mahabharata from India, which is uh, a long story related with the psychological spiritual work that we have to perform inside and that uh, usually as uh, many other uh, stories that you find in other religions are related with uh, events that uh, happened in the physical world but the writers or initiates that wrote those uh, stories Wrote it in the way that they combine the actions of the physical world with the spiritual world. So when you read these uh, stories in uh, any sacred book, if you only uh, stack in the physical aspect of it, then you lose completely the whole meaning of it. And all of that is precisely what we the Gnostics study. We know that uh, all that is written in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, the book of Genesis, in the Quran, and uh, especially in this uh, book, the Mahabharata, which is a very extensive uh, scripture, relates, of course, with the different uh, events that happen in the life of any initiate. In many previous lectures we explained that in the Bible the different parts that uh, are also called archetypes, uh, elements, spiritual elements that all of us have within that we had to develop uh, are called in the Bible Israel. And this is what we always emphasize in many lectures because in this part of the planet people study the Bible. And usually you find the world, the word uh, Israel in different books. And uh, uh, ex the problem exists that also a race called uh, Israelites exists also in the physical world. So people that do not have right information, they tend to mix the archetypes that are written in the Bible with the people that exist in this three-dimensional world called people of Israel that now live there in the Middle East. But that they are uh, spread in the uh, different countries in the world. Similar to the Brahmins that uh, exist in India, that are the representation, physically speaking, of those uh, parts of the being 
related with Brahma, which is the spirit. And that uh, the Mahabharata explains very clearly different parts of the being, which in its conjunction are, are, are Brahma or Brahman, Brahmans, right? So do not confuse the Brahmans with the Brahmins or the Brahmins, right? Two different things. Because this is what we find uh, in this day and age. Physical races that relate the story, the spiritual story that are written in, in these books. So, the maker of this movie, I don't know that, if, uh, that he knows esotericism, but more or less, uh, uh, have the idea when he made uh, this uh, movie, which is very long, in order to express what the Mahabharata explains in the, the whole book. If you read the Mahabharata, well, you will take your time. So you have to understand that he's, he is it's like compacted in order for us to understand so, the first part of the movie relates to the creation of what uh, the Mahabharata called the Pandava, which means the five aspects of divinity in the physical world. Or we will say it in the human form. That will, will be better explanation. Because uh, they are not only physical, but also uh, psychosomatic elements that we have, that we have to build. Five relate to the five uh, parts of the, we, that in Sanskrit is called bodhisattva. Five bodies. For instance, the physical body, the vital body, which is a superior part of the physical body. Those two parts uh, relate to what in the Mahabharata called the future kin, which is called Yuristia, and, uh, and Bhima, who is the strong guy that represents the physical body. While Yuristia is the vital body, or that part that relates to what in Sanskrit we call bodhicitta. Then we find the two, uh, the twins, they call the twins, which means the astral body and the mental body that belong to the same dimension, which is the fifth dimension, which is the dimension where, uh, where we experience all the different visions, dreams, and also nightmares. And beyond these twins, we find the great uh, archer or uh, warrior called Arjuna, which is the causal body. Arjuna in the Bible is represented by Moses and in the Gospels by John the Baptist. So this Arjuna has different names uh, according to the religion that we are studying. It's always the representation of what we call the will of God. When we start uh, performing the will of God, then we are developing Arjuna within. So all of these archetypes have different names in different religions. This is why we have to understand. That's why we understand the Mahabharata, because we associate the archetypes and we only take the name and the actions that they have in order to understand what archetype is this book talking about when it refers to the, these brothers called the Pandavas. And it's because when somebody enters into this path, which is the path of the realization of the self, then we start working from Malkut, according to the Tree of Life, into Yesod, into Hod, into Netzach, and finally into Tifereth, which are related to the physical body, vital body, emotional body, mental body, and body of willpower, or causal body. So when we reach the tap, which is the causal body, 
then we are complete vessel in order to receive Christ. What uh, in Christianity is called Jesus. And what in the Mahabharata is called Krishna. Of course, this archetype or element that uh, we receive when we reach that level has many names. Quetzalcoatl is called in the Aztec pantheon, Mexico. Fuji in Taoism. Uh, different names, as I said, in different religions. So when that element or that archetype which we call Christ or Jesus Christ enter into the human being, which is complete, then the, uh, the whole work starts to develop inside of the initiate. The first step, of course, is the wilderness, which is uh, the second part of the Mahabharata that we saw previous to this one that we are going to see today. The wilderness, as you remember, in the Bible is called Numbers, the book of Numbers. Midbar. That relates to words also. And it is because the word is related with the logos, with creation. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. This is what in, in here, in this area, is called mantras, or sacred words, prayers that you need to develop and to, and to know in order to go into the wilderness. Remember that uh, John the Baptist was baptizing people in the wilderness. And when the Israelites leave Malkut, which is Egypt in the Bible, go into the wilderness. And in there, they start developing themselves and fighting against many other races in order to conquer the promised land. So those other races that they had to conquer are not, as we think, as uh, the Bible describes, people that live there in the Middle East, in that area, in Asia, in, in, I mean, Africa, but parts of ourselves that are very alive within, that we have to conquer. Elements that we call defects, vices, errors, which the Quran called the unbelievers. Those unbelievers are not outside, are inside of us. Elements that we have to annihilate in order to develop completely the consciousness. And the Bible describes that at wars of the Israelites against different races. And here is precisely the word of these Pandavas against those other elements that are within us that wants to avoid the emerging of the Malakim within us, or the angel in us, or the king. They call it uh, Kumara in Sanskrit. So, of course, to perform this work without God is impossible. The human being that wants to transform himself into an, an archangel, somebody without defects and vices, completely clean, needs the help of God. That God is called, in Greek, Christ. And here, it's called Krishna. And the one that is receiving the commandments of Krishna or Christ, or as the Bible said in the Old Testament, Jehovah, which is the same, Yodhe, Bavhe, is Christ, is Krishna. Receive the commandments in order to perform that. While the other parts of his being is acting and developing that beneath the world of the causes. And of course, this is the work that we call the path of the Bodhisattva. And here we will see how uh, when the initiate decided to perform the great work, how all of those parts that we call ego enter into action. 
Here, they call it also parts of God. Why? Because every single ego that we have, whether it's lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, envy, greed, etc., has within, in order to exist, part of the consciousness, part of God, trapped, suffering. So Krishna entered into action in order to destroy all of those parts and liberate the consciousness. This is what in the Gospels are called, or is called, I mean, salvation. It's an action that we have to perform. Here you will see that it's not related with believing in anything, but action that we have to do within. And the, this movie shows it very greatly. So we will watch now then the third part of it, which is the war. As you see, I, re I, I, I repeat again, this word is holy. This is what we call the holy word. Whether in the Mahabharata, whether in the Bible, whether in the Quran, or any other sacred book, this holy word is within, never without. Otherwise, we, 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 we fall into a great mistake. So, let us watch this, and at the end... You can ask your questions. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.